Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you guys are doing good. Just wanted to show you this pretty neat side quest that you can do with some pretty good spell rewards. I'm sure most of you have encountered the Sorcerer Thops at this point. You'll probably first encounter him before you actually get into the academy as he's looking for a key as well. If you follow my guide on the hidden items within the academy, you'll notice on one of the chandeliers that there's an extra glintstone key. And you can give this key to Thops as it will unlock a pretty cool side quest. They're not too welcoming there, I hope he's aware. <laughs> Maybe they've changed. So if you follow up with Thops and visit him at the academy, you want to go to the schoolhouse classroom, go outside and hang a right, and there you will find Thops, deceased, sitting in a chair. I was going to warn him, but I didn't want to kill his enthusiasm. <laughs> He'll get his bell bearing in case you didn't get a chance to purchase any of his spells. Also, a staff and Thops barrier, which is pretty good for reflecting spells. And next, you want to head over to the Converted Tower, which is south of the Academy. And you want to use the Erudition emote that he gave you in front of the statue. Now, you need to have the Academy headpiece on, either the one with two faces or one. And you can check out a previous video on how to get the headpiece I'm wearing now. The other one with just one face on it is hidden in the Academy as well. It's not too hard to get. It's outside on the grass somewhere. Sorry, I don't have an exact location for that one. But it's kind of like in a corner behind a monster. And this is one of the two towers that you can unlock with the emote. This one unlocks a memory stone, which is very valuable, especially for magic casters, as it gives you an extra slot for spells, and some magic spells actually take two or three slots. So you want to get as many of these as possible. And I'm going to show you the route I took to get to the second tower, which is the converted fringe tower, starting off right north above the academy at the East Lucaria Gates, right south of the woods. Pay no attention to the ravine that I highlight, I was just seeing if I could possibly get there faster via that route. As this one's a little more awkward to access, just uh, forgive me for the side tracking that I've done along this path. I've sped up the video to kind of bypass some of that. You have to be careful right here because there's this like giant eye that's very reminiscent of the eye from Lord of the Rings. And if you let this meteor build up on the bottom here, which is madness, it will instantly kill you. At first I just rode by real fast and it was constantly damaging me and I didn't know what the hell was going on. And then just died eventually, I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then when I came back, I saw the giant eye that's being operated by like a guy. I want to go back there and see what that's all about. Maybe try to kill that guy. But if you're behind the trees, it can't damage you or behind a rock or something. So as long as it's out of your sight, it can't hurt you. There is a pretty neat accessory inside this little village here. I believe it draws all attacks towards you, which is really good if you want your summons to survive in a boss battle. There is a like giant golem guy standing out front guarding it. You can just run right by him, but you want to lure him to the side of the building. Otherwise, he'll just stand out front and blast you through the front of the door. <laughs> Yeah. 
You can just run right by this big face guy as he's got a lot of high magic resistance. Took me quite a while to kill him. He just sprays out this like magical damaging mist, which is easy to avoid. And for this tower you get two pretty cool spells. One is a medium range spell with a large AoE blast on impact, which also has a knockback effect. And the other one is a large magical hammer, which has some nice AoE damage as well. And here's a demo of me using the cannon on this really annoying necromancer found in Sage's cave. He's doing some nice knockback effect to him, which delayed his attacks and it also killed that little annoying snake pet that he uses too. So this spell really helped me defeat this boss. Let me know if this guide helped you out, and I hope to see you on the next one.